Hello, hello everyone. This is Kristen Fagan here with Softlex Company for a new episode of Free Spirit Feeding. I'm live on Mondays at 1 p.m. Pacific time on the Softlex Company YouTube channel and Facebook page. And today we're going to be trying a, a little experiment. I have some seed beads here. We have the beautiful seed bead curated collection that Danielle put together for us. We've got three of those colors as well as a handful of rainbow colors. And I'm gonna share with you how I added some to a small little canvas. We met with Danielle Wicks last week for a really fun beading party and she shared some gorgeous patterns with us. Um, be sure to check out our blog all about that with links to the pattern uh, document that she shared. Um, you can also find the patterns in the Softlex VIB studio under the files section. So if you're watching this later and you can't find it on our blog very easily, if you're part of our group, the Softlex VIB studio Facebook group, you can go to the file section and you can grab the patterns that Danielle created over in there. They're super awesome. Um, you can also find them, I think, on John Bede's blog as well. And we were playing around and I tried to listen and follow directions with Danielle, but pretty quickly I veered off path. <laughs> and I just started doing some free form uh, seed beading. Um, I don't know if I will keep this, I might just cut it up, but it was fun to play with and see what happens. And um, it got me thinking and talking about how I have wanted to try to do some embellishments on canvas, my canvas paintings with some beads. So last week when I had a little downtime, maybe on Friday, I'm trying to remember what day it was, I sat down and did a little playing and I found that it worked okay. And I thought I would kind of come on here today and um, share with you how to embellish a canvas painting with seed bead embroidery. And this is purely experimental in that I am not a seed bead embroiderer. I've never done it before. So there's probably things that I'm just sort of winging it on, but I thought it would be really fun to discuss and play together. I see a few of you are joining me and commenting with the hashtag gingerbread, hooray. That is our giveaway for today. Um, we're gonna be giving away one of our gingerbread bead strands. So these strands are made for us uh, exclusively for Softlex Company from our friends at Jesse James Beads. They go along, they coordinate with our holiday kit this year, which is called the gingerbread kit. And we are about 50% sold out of these right now. And look, it's a really chunky one. It's a chunky one this time. Um, really fun kit to grab and it's on sale until tomorrow. So you can get it right now for 20% off at softlexcompany.com. We don't usually have our kits on sale very often. So that's kind of a little extra special right now. And that's good until November 7th at midnight Pacific time. We have an entire holiday little shop we put together that's on sale. Dana says the gingerbread kit is beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's really a fun kit. I mean, just think about a gingerbread house and gingerbread cookies and gingerbread people. And they, they can be, um, it's, it is a fun one. It is one that is gonna, I think, just be um, really delightful to play with this uh this time we did nutcracker i think that was last year we did nutcracker and so that one was a little more elegant got the ballet theme um and i feel like this one is really like kind of classic and a lot of fun <laughs> seriously terry that should be maybe we should have had that disclaimer do not eat your gingerbread kit <laughs> It's so true. Your gingerbread kit is for creating accessories or DIY decor items for the holidays. Do not eat your gingerbread kit. 
Oh, are they, Melissa? This was a happy accident for us then. Melissa says gingerbreads are so on trend. I'm seeing it in a lot of stores. It's cute decor. That's super fun because, yeah, we think we we kind of thought about it. Um, maybe even last Christmas it came up. And so we put it on the list to do for this year. So that's great that we just accidentally happened to be on trend. Love when that happens. <laughs> Oh, Dana says this is her favorite holiday kit she's gotten from Softlex. Hey, that says a lot. I know you've gotten a lot of our kits, Dana. So thanks. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, you know, I love to hear that. It's great when you get excited each time and you love the new kit and it, each kit feels better than the last. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Let's see if I missed any other. Oh, Kathy says, what a fun project. Thank you. You know, sometimes it's like one of those things, right? Where you're, we're so, we're all creative. We have lots and lots of ideas and it's like, can never get to all of them. And I love when an idea that I had outside of free spirit beating that I've wanted to do for a while, all of a sudden makes its way um, into a perfect opportunity to do it with all of you. So <laughs> that's what this project is. It's kind of like that. I agree. I agree, Terry. Terry says, I think a lot of the trending Christmas decor as of late is throwback retro and classic gingerbread retro. Um, is really a lot of fun. I feel like our I feel like there are a lot of beads in here that can uh, definitely fit that retro theme. La -da 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 -da. Gingerbread, gingerbread, gingerbread. So speaking of gingerbread, like I said, the kit is fifty percent sold out. Sold out. We actually only have eleven of these strands left. And so I'm gonna be giving one away. Um, so that means we only have 10 of these strands left. So if you like this really fun, classic um, style, make sure to grab it. I especially love these like huge glass beads. I mean, those are so, so cool. Really, really fun all together. But again, like any of the strands, you can pull them apart and you can move, use little bits and pieces in lots of different ways. So totally up to you. They sure do, says Sandy. <laughs> Sandy, well, they sure they sure make a lot of gingerbread houses in Christmas holiday movies. Okay, so how many of you out there have made gingerbread houses and are you any good at it? Because I've done it a few times with my kids, especially when they were little, and I am horrendous at it. <laughs> it is not my forte to play with a lot of food, actually. Food in general, um, I think I can make it creative and make it look fun, and it's always kind of a mess. And gingerbread houses have always been a hot mess. They are delicious. They're a lot of fun, and I've always loved the perfectly imperfectness of them, but I have always struggled with making them. Um, so I'm curious, have any of you out there made some gingerbread houses, and do they fall apart on you, or are, you know, do you just whip it together and you put on a whole uh, <laughs> beautiful display? Um I think I might be better with people. Maybe I should make some gingerbread people this year instead. The flat cookies might be a better option for me. Melissa says, it was a fail for me. Fun to make, but didn't look at, look pretty. Oh, they do stay together. Dana has to share her tips with us. <laughs> How do you get it to stay, Dana? <laughs> Sandy buys the pre-made kits and you know I've done the pre-made kits too and I still can't get it together I still cannot get them to stay <laughs> it takes patience that's probably my problem that's probably the problem is I, I'm probably trying to do it all in one sitting and I bet you you have to probably do it in parts. 
<laughs> oh, your gingerbread house turned out really cute. Awesome. Becky's done them and she's not great at it. They always taste better than they look. Yes, they do. Oh, my friend Colleen is here. Hi, Colleen. <laughs> Lovely to see you on here. Terry says, I've never done a gingerbread house. I'd rather eat ginger snaps than make a house that is for looking but made from cookies. Yeah, I definitely love ginger snaps. I feel like I have to, um, I should probably try the cookie route. Oh, Nancy says, I think the professionals use freeze dry air or whatever it's called. And you need to make royal icing. So maybe it's, it's the trick is in the icing. <laughs> maybe we'll see a few of you being inspired. Like Shakita says, she hasn't made one yet. Maybe this year, maybe a few of you will be inspired to make gingerbread houses with all of the gingerbread uh, inspiration we'll be sharing this year from the kit. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna share real fast before I put my camera down here, I'm just gonna share the homepage and show you all what is on sale. Let's make sure this is popping up. Yeah, it is, okay. So we've got the live beating party with Danielle is here on the homepage. And then there's the holiday sale. If you click on this banner, you will go to the entire sale. So I will click on that. And then everything in here in this category is going to be on sale. So everything's 20% off and you won't see the sale price here. You'll see it when you add it to your cart. So I'll just scroll down. We put stuff in here that were red and green and blue and silver for the holidays. And we also put some things in here that were um, like Tierra Cass Celtic cross, as well as the crucifix, the sacred heart items, um, the Our Lady link. I think we've got some Star of David's in here. Yep, on the next page. And then lots of silk, kind of white, clear, blue, reds, and greens. So kind of a mix of items. I think there's a few hundred in here. So go check that out. It is under shop under um, holidays if you don't make it to the homepage. Woohoo! Anne says she just ordered the gingerbread kit. Hooray! All right, so let's go ahead and come down to my beading table. And I'm gonna share some of the fun things that I'm gonna be working with today. So first thing first, I've got a lot of different seed beads around here. If you want to check out our curated colors that Danielle Wicks put together for us, we have three styles. This one's called the Vintage Holiday. This one's selling the fastest. So we've got, um, I think we have about 10 of them left. So that's the Vintage Hol Holiday Collection. And it's got a gold, a green, and kind of a whiny colored red. And that's what I used on here so far. The next one is the Red Rose Tea. And this one's got a mauve color, then a red, and then this really pretty um, peachy pink. And then the third one we have is the Arctic Circle. So this one's got this really pretty blue. What's this blue called? Does it say on here? Arctic blue. Well, there we go. There's Arctic blue. Then there's a really dark blue, like a navy in the middle. And then um, a silver lined Delica bead at the end. And that's Arctic circle. I think we had about a dozen of that one left. 
And those come in sets of three, each of those. But if you just wanna pick up some seed beads to try uh, one color and do some embroidery, then you can always grab one of these. We've got a rainbow of colors available, and these are all sold individually. Oh, I know, Terry says, Danielle is amazing at color blends. Those are all lovely. She sent us a whole slew of them, and those were the three we picked for right now. But it was a hard choice because they were, they were all so, so pretty. So these are all sold individually. Uh, we did have, I think we sold out of the orange. So that's why we don't have a bundle available right now. But you can get all of these just as one-offs if you just wanted to try it with one tube. So those are all of our Delica seed beads. We've got two colors of thread. This is the Mayuki beading thread. It's a nylon thread. And we've got it in silver and in gold. <laughs> Terry says, Delicas are a slippery slope. So many colors and shades and finishes, each lovelier than the last. It's true. It is true. And then you get all the patterns you can do. There's so many fun ways to use them. And then these are the needles. So I'm using one of these needles. I grabbed this one from the center. I think it's a size 12 that I grabbed. This is a 10, 12 pack. It says on the back here, size 10, 12 needles are recommended for size six, eight, 10, 11, 13, and 15 seed beads and size 11, 13, and 15 delicas. These are all size 11 delicas. So we sell these needles at softlexcompany.com too. I grabbed one of them in here and I don't know a lot about needles. I don't know a lot about a lot of this stuff actually. So like that's why I said it's an experiment. Um, you could probably grab some larger needles if they'll fit through your beads, but I did find that this worked. Now, my needle is slightly bent from me being a little bit wobbly, but it is pretty flexible um, and I was able to get it through. I have about, I'd probably say about two coats on here, maybe three coats of paint. I think what I did was two coats of acrylic and then I did um, a paint marker on top of that. So it's probably two coats. If you're gonna have a really thick painting, you might not be able to use this thread. You might need something a little bit thicker. Um, but for this, two, three layers seem to be just fine. Becky says, I've done regular embroidery with just cotton thread and an acrylic painting, but I've never done bead embroidery on a painting. Yay! Hopefully you will try it too. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for reminding me, Anne. I do, I do. So this is one of my paintings in my mini portal um, series. I did it this summer, and this is actually painting number two. And I have a YouTube video that shows all of the paintings in the series, and they're all for sale. I did this series as a fundraising um, collection to help my son, my youngest son, buy a new violin. So we're still selling pieces and he's getting about 90% about of the proceeds are going to him. I'm just taking a little bit to help me with my, like some of my administrative costs and my material cost, but the rest is going to him. I've We've raised almost $400 right now and I'm hoping to get, um, hoping to get up to closer to a thousand if I can. His violin is going to be like three to four thousand dollars. So kind of wild. So I went ahead and started this little series as a way to use as a fundraising. And I think I've got somewhere around, I want to say, I can't remember now how many there were total. 
I feel like there were around 50 total. If you go to the description in the video, Damien went ahead and shared this video. Thank you, Damien. You can find it on my YouTube channel, which is at Kristen Fagan Art. Um, and it's called the Spiral Painting Series. And they're all numbered with a little number on the back. If you go onto the description, then you'll see a whole list of all of the numbers. And I write what the price is for them or if they've been sold. So you can check that out. And then you just, um, I think you just would email me or message me somehow. And I will get that out for you. Dana, oh my gosh. I'm sure a piano does not cost, cost that much these days, right? Dana says, wow, I think that's what I bought what I paid for my piano. I know. He is moving out of a student violin into a professional violin. So it's like three to five thousand is the low, the low end for a professional violin, which is a lot of money. I think he got to play a violin over the summer with um, he went on a field trip and they they were looking at some really great old violins. I think he played one that was like $15,000 or something. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> so yeah, so we've been trying to work on that. We're hoping by the um, the beginning of the year, if not sooner to be able to go and, and get him one. We did find that you can kind of like put down a deposit and pay it off over time, which I didn't realize. So we got to check, we're going to go check into that. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to share is this really fun pair of earrings. I was looking for earrings to wear today and I forgot all about these. And I did a video tutorial on these a while back and they use a color very similar to the Arctic cir uh, circle color here. And it's just wrapped around with craft wire, wrapped around like a big focal bead. Super cute. And so I just wanted to point those out again. And I think Damien is going to share the link to this tutorial as well. And I have a lot of canvases with pink and with purple on them. <laughs> so if you watch the video, I put, the, I kind of hold them out and we, each one and kind of move it around so you could see it clearly. Um, and there are a lot of them with pink and with purple on them. All right, so this is a, this one is a canvas board, right? So it's flat and hard. So this is not a candidate for doing any bead embroidery on. Now this one is like a little mini canvas. So see how it's got a little more depth on there and you can then feed your needle through on this particular one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of add to this. I just did one bead at a time to start, especially because it's going in a circular pattern too. I know I was watching a few in embroidery videos and if you're doing something in a straight line, you can kind of get a few more on there at once. But um, I thought it would just be easier for me to play around with just doing one bead at a time. And I pulled some beads from the Vintage Holiday. Those were those three. And that's what I used here. I used some of the gold ones first and then I use some of the pink from the red rose and then some green and then some gold again. Here's that pink from the red rose. I like how the pink kind of pops a little bit and then I don't know what else I want to use. Let's see. I wasn't sure this red didn't quite match as well. This color does go pretty nicely so I might pull some of these out. Oh, good memory, Cindy. I couldn't remember what they were from. And I just looked on seed bead earrings with craft wire and found them on our YouTube channel. Cindy says those earrings were from about a year ago because the copper filigree beads were from the Customer Appreciation Week Very Perry kit. 
yeah, I think those beads are going to be pretty on here. One of the things that's going to be tr that's kind of tricky is trying to figure out some beads that would um, be seen well on the on top of the colors. So I should say I did about a wingspan of this gold thread. I did one wingspan. I threaded it on the needle, and then I knotted it at the end. I did four overhand knots. So simple overhand knots. I'll just share that with you here at the end, which is I went around my two fingers, came back, and then I tucked it through the center. I had cut off a little bit of the tail already. And then you have this nice loop. And then I just slowly moved it down to try and get it right on top of those other knots that I did. And I did that four times, now it's five times. But I think I did it three times the first time. So it's a pretty tight, canvas is a pretty tight weave here. So I think three is probably fine, but it doesn't hurt to do some more. So I'm just gonna pull my needle from the back to the front and I forgot to put a bead on it. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna, hello. <laughs> let's go back, let's see if I can feed that back out. I could, okay, good. And you know what? I am right. I want to just, I want to feed it through first and then put a bead on it. All right, get it together, Kristen. So we're going to feed, <laughs> we're going to feed that through. So you've got, I've got my little knot back here. <laughs> then I'm going to pick up a bead and I'm going to try this dark mauve color bead. And just slide your bead down. and then go right next to it and poke back down into your canvas. I do find poking from the paint down to be a little bit easier than poking from the back up. It has a little bit more give going from this direction. So I always find I have to kind of wiggle it a little more that way than I do kind of going back down. I don't know what sparkle filament is, but that sounds like a great way to jazz it up. I'm guessing you're saying like the sparkle is the thread itself. So it add a little something. Now you do have on a canvas generally hard edges. So straight edges, so just be mindful of those. And you also wanna make sure that you always get both of those um, pieces of thread down before you move to your next one so that you don't have some thread slack hanging out. One of the other things I noticed when I was watching some embroidery videos was that some people might go ahead and come up with their shape and then poke all the holes. And then, you know, just like when you'd buy like a, one of those embroidery kits or templates at the store. I didn't want to do that on this for a couple of reasons. The one is this is very thin needle. So if I just poked a hole in here, it really wouldn't be that large to see where it was. And so I didn't really find it to be um, that helpful because I might end up going down, not in the hole anyway, because that just was making such a tiny little mark. Now you could use a bigger needle and maybe that would be helpful, but again, you gotta make sure it fits through your beads. So um, if it was a little bit thicker in diameter and still fit through my beads, maybe that would be 
something to try. And I'm just gonna keep going around in a circle. I'm just in a spiral here and I'm just trying my best. It's a little easier to see on the back end, but I'm just trying my best to keep it in a nice flow. Making sure my spacing looks about the same and trying to keep it in that circular shape. I did about seven beads of each color. So right now I'm at one, two, three, four. And then I switched the color just to kind of play with it and see how the different colors would look. Oops, I gotta come back up first. So let me come back here on the back side. Pull through and then I can add my next bead. The other thing that was kind of a fun thing to think about that I realized after was that it's really nice to put your hand on the piece of art and to feel all of the beads going around. And it made me think about how this could be a wonderful um, kind of way to even have artwork available for people that are vision impaired and they can kind of feel out what you're doing instead of seeing. It wasn't something I thought about when I started, but it is something that I realized after I got going. <laughs> Deborah says, Sparkle Filament is made by a company called Krenick, which is based in our hometown of Parkersburg, West Virginia. There are lots of colors, as in regular embroidery floss. Very cool. And she uses it while making crochet garments. It adds a definite drama to the piece. We always like a little extra drama, don't we? Yes, tactile. That's a good word, Cindy. It has a tactile element to it, which is really kind of cool. It was funny, we went to a, um, my friends and I went to a gallery opening this weekend. I had some art in a show and some of the pieces were just like begging to be touched. And you know, you can't just touch artwork <laughs> in a gallery, um, but it's really fun when you can. You know, if this was a piece that was like intended to be touched and you could always put a sign or something there that says please touch because there were quite a few pieces that had gorgeous texture and really interesting finishes on them and we just were like oh my gosh I want to touch that <laughs> one two three four five six all right we're up to number seven Seven. So let's choose another color. Maybe the green, because the green was kind of over here and I haven't used it since. And I love green. I actually think green is probably the most poppy out of these two. So let's grab the green from, like, is it the most popping or is it just that my eye wants to see green <laughs> and so for me it's the most poppy i think these white beads would be really fun too especially because i have these white lines that i put on here that could be kind of neat if i followed just the lining of those white lines in the white beads. That could be another way of, of doing it. 
All right, I see a few of you. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, Hope says, one of the things I don't like about art museums is no touching. I know. Well, in most cases, you're gonna ruin the art because the oils and stuff from your hands are gonna um, transpose to the art and then the art will degrade. And so there's a good reason for it. Um, but there's definitely many times where you just want to touch it. <laughs> Anne says, my auntie did an artwork where she wanted people to walk on it. It was a canvas with layers of paint and she had thread on it like a shag rug. That's so cool. So with everyone walking on it, they sort of added to the piece, right? It was like they were part of the collaboration. Somebody says, it's funny, I don't think about touching something until it says, don't touch it. And then that's all you want to do, right? You're like, oh my gosh, why can't I touch it? I want to touch it. <laughs> Zach is asking, Kristen, are you going to put a coating of varnish afterwards? Actually, I've already varnished these. Because it was a complete painting um, already, I had varnished it already. And I don't know, I think the varnish would actually get bubbled up or might get caught in between. So I would suggest varnishing before. If you're using just a regular varnish, like I just used like a very thin cup, I think I did two coats of varnish. If you're using something like a resin varnish or something that's really thick or hard, then you're, you know, you'd want to varnish after because you're not gonna be able to thread through it. In those cases, like a resin varnish, if you were to do that, would not bubble up here. As long as you made nice and thick, it probably seal the beads inside and you might not have as much of a tactile um, finish. So a couple different ways you can do it, depending on what your final, um, what your vision is and what your final feeling is about it. So if you haven't, oh yeah, I think so. Sherry says, this is really cool. I bet your iridescent beads would be pretty too. I totally think so. I love that Shakita. I know they're definitely, especially in like children's museums and certain museums that want you to be interactive where they want you to like touch it and feel it and be kind of part of the exhibit. Super fun. <laughs> I'm sure they were. People are just not used to being allowed to walk, to touch it or be involved in it in any way. And then, and also we all have this idea of like, art being so precious, they don't want to, they don't want to ruin it or, you know, not realizing that that was the point, that was the fun of it all. Last chance. All right, yes, thanks for the reminder, Damien. Um, so if you have not, if you have not entered yet, last chance to enter the gingerbread giveaway. I'll pull up that giveaway list in just a minute. Oh, always have to hit the camera at least once, right? It is so cute, Debbie. Debbie says, I really like the size of this piece. I think it's three by three. Let me, uh, yes, three inches by three inches. It's really cute. And because it has a little canvas back, you can, um, oh, this one got a little, this one got a little stuck. Let's see. What did I do here? There we go. 
we go. Um, you can either hang it up in a really cute little place or you can put it on one of these cute little easel stands and it could just be like on your desk or on your bookshelf. It's so sweet. Or you can get a couple of them. I had a friend of mine buy a few of them so that she could do like a little, a little cluster. Gingerbread, gingerbread, gingerbread. Okay, I'm gonna go, why did I go so far? Let me go one more time in. And I'm just gonna tie it off now. And then we'll choose our winner. So when you're done, when you're ready to tie it off, or if you're getting low on thread and you need to tie it off and then add another thing, you're just going to make an overhand knot on the end here. Pull that through, and then you're gonna get your little loop to go, oh, let me get on camera. So here's my loop down there. I'm gonna bring it down, direct it towards the canvas, and then once it's down close to the canvas, I'm just gonna stick my finger over it so that I could pull it. Pull it down. And then my knot is right down there. And I'm going to do that a few more times. And I kind of want at least three of them. But sometimes you don't get it like right on top of the other. And so I want three good ones, three good ones on top of each other. And then at least I feel confident that it's less likely to Let me switch fingers there so I could pull with my right. See, that one wasn't on top, but. And like I said, I don't do things like this often. So if you have better tricks, <laughs> share them, share them with us. There we go, that one was good. It is a fun pattern, even on the back, isn't it? I mean, it goes to show you if you're using a nice contrasting thread, you might not even need the beads if you wanna just play with the thread itself. Super fun, very tactile. Um, I think I'll probably try and do a few more rows of them just to play. Sherry, use a pin to direct the knots. That's a great idea. That'll get it a little more in a, a little more precise. <laughs> the stand is so cute. <laughs> Oh, that's a good idea, Terry. Terry says you may want to cut a piece of felt to cover the back. You could cover either the whole back or you can cover here. But I, if you cover the entire back, then you have to put like something here to hang it from. Unless it's going to go on the little stand and then you won't need to do that. But that is a, that is a very good point. Angel says great idea. So cute. I love this. Thank you, guys. Terry would cover the interior to protect the stitches. All right, so let's go ahead and it is. That's a great idea too. If you're using a, if you um, if you ever get any of these canvas boards, now you can't embroider these, but because they're hard, you can easily glue a little magnet on the back and make them magnetic. All right, let's share my screen and see. Choose our winner. You must be here to win. So when I call your name, just let me know that you're here. Otherwise, I will have to choose another person. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead, last chance. Choosing our winner now. Penny says you can go through, do another stitch and make a loop and then you could do it a couple of times. Oh, that's a good idea. Winner, Stephanie Howard. Are you here, Stephanie? Let us know in the comments that you're here. You are our winner for the gingerbread strand. I can't believe we're already talking holiday projects and holiday beads. It is crazy that we're in November already. Stephanie is here. Hooray! Congratulations, Stephanie. Please go ahead and send us an email at info at softlexcompany.com. And we will send out your prize. Just let us know your shipping information. And Damien should be putting that in the comments. You're welcome, Zach. Oh, you painted with your summer art kids. That's awesome, Kim. Hooray, Stephanie Howard, please email us at info at softlexcompany.com and let us know your shipping address. I just wanted to pop that up so you have the correct email easily accessible to you. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, congrats on my art show, says Sherry Miller. <laughs> Thanks, Sherry. I actually had two art shows this weekend. I had two exhibit openings. I had one on Friday night, which was my rainbow goddess painting that you guys see in the back of my videos a lot of the time. Um, that was awesome. It was at the Herberger Theater, which is in downtown Phoenix, and it was fancy. And it was like the fanciest place I've ever had an exhibit. It was pretty, pretty cool. And then on Saturday, I am involved in a, um, a wonderful art group called Artthena, which is a bunch of women artists here in the Phoenix area. And we put on a group show in the West Valley at, um, WAM, which is an art association gallery. And so that was on Saturday. I sadly did not feel well on Saturday and I wasn't able to make it to the opening, but the artwork is up and it's going to be there all the whole month of November. And I'm going to go check it out. I'm hoping um, in another week or so, so that I can at least see the show because it's a beautiful show. And I was just so, so bummed. But you know what? two openings right back to back. I just couldn't take it. My body was like, too much, too much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am a busy lady. Thank you, Kim. Kim says, love your paintings. I Thank you. It's funny how things always happen like all at once, right? Like some, I'll, I will go months and months and months without um, anything like that. And then all of a sudden it's like back to back. <laughs> But that's okay. I just take it when it comes. Thank you all for being here with me today. I look forward to seeing you again next Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific time for a new episode of Free Spirit Feeding. We have uh, the wonderful Rebecca Combs on Wednesday sharing a project with us, a new Kumihimo project. And she has some kits available, so be sure to check them out at designandadorn.com. The design is called Basilica, so you can grab the Basilica kit. She's got a bunch of beautiful colorways. Um, either I or Sarah will be there, but kind of leaving that loose depending on what's going on in Sarah's life that day and whether or not uh, it will be her or will be me. So join us on Wednesday for the beading party with Rebecca Combs of Design and Adorn at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And then Joyce will be back on Friday with her new series, Spill the Beads with Joyce at 9.30 in the morning. She made an awesome bracelet last Friday with wire wire work and our new check glass simple cut beads. So go check that out if you have not seen it yet. It was really, really great. Thank you. Yes, we give Sarah, always giving Sarah and her family lots of love. Thanks you everybody. I hope you'll get to see her this week, um, but we'll see, right? So <laughs> it'll be great if she can, because I know she misses all of you. Um, and if not, hopefully the weekend, the week after. 
Thanks, everyone. Happy beating.